Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on calculating the 95% confidence interval using Microsoft Excel. I'll be demonstrating two methods of calculating the confidence interval. One is the confidence.norm function in Excel, and the other is by calculating the standard error of the mean and the z-score that matches the 95% confidence interval, so an alpha of 0.05. You can also use this calculator to calculate any percent confidence interval, not just the 95% confidence interval. So you can see in this Excel worksheet, I have fictitious data for a substance use inventory. And I have 50 observations. And let's assume that the unit of analysis here is points on an instrument and that this score is a standard score, more specifically a t-score. So we'd expect for this score to have a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So you can see here to the right, I have the mean, the standard deviation, the sample size, and the alpha. And where I'm going to put these values, I have this in a light gray. And the reason I've done that is because for either method, the confidence.norm method, or by using the standard error of the mean and the z-score, I want to have these values available. Although I don't actually need the mean for either sets of calculations, but I like to display the mean first. Because even though we don't need it to calculate the confidence interval, we will need it to calculate the upper and lower limits for the confidence interval. So let's start by calculating the mean. So I'm going to go into cell D2 here, and the formula, the function, will be average. And then the range will be A2, and I'm going to hit Control, Shift, Down, Arrow, all the way down to A51. And then hit Enter, and you can see the mean for this sample, the substance use inventory sample here, is 51.54. Then I want to calculate the sample standard deviation. So that'll be stdev.s for sample. The stdev.p is for the population standard deviation. So I'll put that function in and then move over to A2 and again control shift down arrow and enter and we can see we have a standard deviation of 8.26 points so it's in the same unit of analysis as the sample next I want to calculate the sample size I know that sample size is 50 but I want to calculate it with a function so I'm going to use the count function so it's going to equal sign count and again the same range we've been working with a2 through a51 So now we have the mean, the standard deviation, and the sample size, and now I want to set the alpha. So if we're looking for the 95% confidence interval, the alpha would be set at 5%. So I'm going to put in 0 0.05, enter. So that's my alpha is at 5%. So now I'm going to use the confidence.norm function to calculate the confidence interval. So that'll be equal sign confidence.norm. Here it is, down a bit. And click enter and you can see it's looking for three different arguments. The first is the alpha. Well, I've set that up here. That's uh, D8 at 0 0.05. So I'll select D8, comma, and then it's looking for the standard deviation, and I know that's up here in D4, 8.26. And then it's looking for the sample size, which of course is in cell D6, it's 50. So now we have the confidence interval for this sample. Now in order to set the upper and lower limits, we need to subtract the confidence interval from the mean, and we need to add the confidence interval to the mean. 
So for the upper limit, we're going to add the confidence interval to the mean. So it's going to be equal sign the mean plus the confidence interval. Enter. So it's going to be 53.83. And for the lower limit, we'll subtract the confidence interval from the mean. So it'll be equal sign the mean minus the confidence interval and enter. So we can see the upper limit 53.83, the lower limit 49.25. So what this tells us is that we can be 95% confident that the true mean for the population from which the sample was taken falls between 49.25 and 53.83. So you can see in this case the confidence dot norm function did all the work and made it fairly easy to generate the confidence interval and then the upper and lower limits. Now I'm going to show you how to come to the same conclusion, the same upper and lower limits and the same confidence interval, but by using the standard error of the mean. And by using this method, I'll probably come to a better understanding of how confidence intervals are generated. So the standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the mean. And it's always going to be a smaller value than the standard deviation. Like the standard deviation, the standard error of the mean is expressed in the same units as the original sample. And the formula for calculating the standard error of the mean is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample. So I'll go in here and put that formula in. It'll be equal sign and then the standard deviation, cell D4, and divided by, I'm just going to separate this with parentheses, and be the square root of the sample size. Now we don't need the extra set of parentheses in this function for it to come back with this result, but I like to separate everything to make it more clear. So we can see that we have a standard error of the mean of 1.17. And because the standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the mean, we know that there is a 68% chance that the true mean from this population is going to fall between the mean minus the standard error of the mean and the mean plus the standard error of the mean. So that would be a 68% confidence interval. Now that's not a confidence interval that we would often use in statistics. We usually use the 95% confidence interval, but I'm just trying to demonstrate how the standard error of the mean fits in as we move toward calculating the 95% confidence interval. So we're going to need to multiply the standard error of the mean by a z-score so that we have the 95% confidence interval. So we need the z-score associated with 95% of the observations being under the curve. And we can generate that using equal sign and then norm dot s dot inv. And it's only looking for one argument here, which is probability. And that's going to be 1 minus the alpha divided by 2. and we get 1.96. So we know that 95% of the scores fall between negative 1.96z and positive 1.96z. So to generate the confidence interval, we just need to take the standard error of the mean and multiply that by this z-score of 1.96. 
and you can see it returns the same value, 2.29. And the upper and lower limits of that confidence interval are generated the same way we did over here using the confidence.norm. Uh, we'll just go equal sign and then take the mean and add the confidence interval for the upper limit and then equal sign take the mean and subtract the confidence interval for the lower limit. Again we get the same upper and lower limits. Down in these cells that have the black fill I'm going to put a function uh, that's a sentence builder that explains the results for various calculations here. It's a complex function, so I stored it over here. And it can display this way because I put an apostrophe in front of it, so it displays as a string. So I'm going to copy this function, Control C, and then move back over and paste it into C15. And get, you can see it comes back here. There's a 95% chance the true mean is between 49.25 and 53.83. So if we were to change the confidence interval from a 95% confidence interval to say a 99% confidence interval, we would expect the lower limit to be decreased and the upper limit to be increased. So let's see what happens. We'll change the 0 0.05 to 0 0.01. That would be the 95% confidence interval. And we can see the, dis the distance between the lower limit and the upper limit did increase as we expected. 48.53 is the lower and 54.55. Uh, similarly, we could look at the other direction. We could look for, say, the 80% confidence interval. So we'd want 0.2 here, and we'd expect this to be a more constricted range, and in fact it is. Now it's between 50.04 and 53.04. So although we have the option to uh, change the alpha and then change the confidence interval, it is important to note that the most common would be the 95%. So I'll leave it set to that. But you can set the alpha to whatever you need uh, in this cell, the D8 cell. I'm going to reset this alpha back to 0 0.05 because the 95% confidence interval is the most popular confidence interval we would calculate. I hope you found this video on calculating the 95% confidence interval to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.